Hello, welcome to this Excel tutorial. Today I will tell you everything you need to know about pivot tables. Pivot tables are a great way of sorting out lots of information very quickly. And you can do many, many different things. That you can transform it, create graphs out of it, and you can create real dynamic reporting using it as well. So in this tutorial, I will be telling you how to create a pivot table. I'll also be showing you how to transform the pivot table, changing rows and columns. And then I'll be showing you how to use slices, which is a way of adding like an extra filter that is not displayed in the table. And then I'll be finally, I'll be showing you how to create graphs using pivot tables. So let's get started. Uh, for this tutorial, I'll be using the data on the left. It's a very small data table compared to the ones you could be using for pivot tables. And what we're doing is firstly, we'll be creating a pivot table. Now, when you create a pivot table, you have an option to either create it in the existing tab or in a new sheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create it in an existing tab. So how you do it is firstly, you select the data table data you want. So let's select this entire data table. Let's go to insert at the top left. And then below the insert, actually where you click insert, you will see the section called tables. And in this section, you have pivot tables, recommended pivot tables and table. And we're going to click on the far left on top left pivot table. So when we click on it, we will get this option appearing here. And it will say it will say choose the data you want to analyze. Now we've already selected the information, so that is automatically populated. And then below that, we'll have choose where you want to where you want the pivot table to be replaced. And because we want to place it in the existing sheet, we're going to click on existing rather than new. And then we're going to click in the entry box for location. Then we're going to click where you want this pivot table to start. Now, if you're going to have filters on the pivot table and it will become clear what that means later on, then I'd leave some space both to the top and to the left. So we're going to place it here in cell M17, just for this tutorial. And then we're going to click OK. And when we click OK, we get this um, pivot table one tab here, because it's the title of this pivot table, and we'll get this sort of image appearing. And then on the right, notice we have a section called pivot table fields on the right here, and we have all of our column titles here that, that match up here. And then we also have below that we have these sort of grid here of top left being filters, top right saying column, bottom left saying rows, and the bottom right saying values. And what we can do is let's populate this. So if we say we want to have columns on top, then we want that to have, let's say, item on the top. We just you can either click on the box here and it will populate the rows. Or you can untick the box and you can just click and hold and then drag to where you want it placed. So we want this to appear as columns. So let's drag and drop to columns. And notice that it will automatically update with unique values. So although there were repeats here of items, it will only take the unique values. And then let's say on the rows, we want to have region. So again, drag and drop rows region. And so there we've got, we've got, re, we've got the rows as region, columns as items. And then we want to populate this with a field. So let's say units and the exact same thing, drag and drop. And to populate the field, you have to go to values. And here in values, we have sum of units. So this calculates the sum of these values split by um, items in the columns and rows for and regions for the rows. And if you wanted to change sum to say count or another value, you can click on the arrow or you can right click. I would say if you click on the arrow here and you on the values to the right of sum of units and you go up to value field settings and you click on value field settings you will see this window appear and notice that sum has been highlighted and you can get count, average, max, min, product and it just goes down the drop list and you can play around with it however you want. 
So if you wanted to count, you just click on count and you press OK. And that will get the count of these units rather than the sum. And we, but we wanted to stick with sum, so let's go back to value field settings and click on sum. Another thing you can do is in the value field settings, instead of summarize values by, you can go to show value as, and here you have a new list. And what you can do is you can get a percentage of the ground total, percentage of the column total, percentage of the row total, and other things. So if we just do percentage of, let's say, column total, press OK, these numbers will change to a percentage of the column. So out of all the binders, let's say out of all the binders, 58.73% is in the central area and 9% is in the west area. So it's broken down this grand total value by a percentage. And if you want to get rid of that, you can either go back to the drop down list I've done or you can right click, go down to the option list, show value as and go back to no calculation. And another way of transform the data is when you click on the pivot table, notice that this ends in help and then you have sort of a light bulb here and tell me what you want to do. But if you click on the pivot table, you will get more options available. So if you click on these options, you can see here that we have a whole new, right, what, whole new set of options available to us. If we wanted to, for example, let us get rid of these grand totals. So if you click on design, go to the far top left, we have subtotals, we can take those off. You can take off grand totals, off of rows and columns. Report layout, we can show in tabular form, we can repeat item labels and show outline, show in compact. And it's a really good way of just playing around with it, just to see how you prefer your pivot tables. So for this case, we want to keep our grand total on. So let's go on for rows and for columns. That means it will show grand total here at the end of the table and it will show here at the bottom of the table. If you wanted to say you wanted to add some more data to the bottom here and then you wanted to include it in your pivot table, what you could do is, so let's do that actually. Let's go like this, let's copy and paste. Let's say this was east. Let's say same same company or same rep. And let's say it was another pen. Let's say there are 50 of these these time. Unit value was the same. And let's say the total was, let's say equals that, times by that. And then we want to include this in our pivot table. So now we've added this extra row here, this one. And we want to include that in our pivot table. We can click on our pivot table. Notice these extra columns appearing. Go to Analyze. Go to Change Data Source in the Data section. Click on Change Data Source. And notice it's got the area highlighted where we selected our pivot table range. And we just want to update the row to go one extra. Select our new range, that's row 52. Press OK, click on refresh. So you right click, click refresh, and that will update accordingly. So let me introduce you to slices now. Well, let's actually add a filter. So let's add a filter on order date. So when you drag and drop order date down to the filter, note this appears above. This is why I said to leave some space on the top because the more filters you have, the more it will go up. So let's filter on unit cost and rep as well. So it keeps going up and up. So it's best to leave some space to the top if you're gonna have lots of filters. So let's go back and just have order date as a filter. And we just click on the drop down and select any date we want. There we go, 14th of the, the first. And notice this time we can only select one value at a time, but if you want to select multiple values, we can just Select, tick the box here, and we can just select however many values we want, say for that week, for example. And then untick it, and then we can press all, and we get back to the original set of values. So let's get rid of this filter. You do the same thing as either drag and drop, but in reverse. And the same for columns and values. If you want to change them around, just click on what you have here in the grid, and then drag and drop the table above. Or you can 
we go back you can also just drag and just take it out so whatever's not in that grid will not appear in your pivot table so let me show you about slices slices is a great way of if you like this table but you want to sort it out have different filters and you can use slices by going in, clicking on pivot table go to one of these extra tabs that appear go to in this case pivot table analyze click on insert slicer and you'll have these lists of metrics at the top as available slicers so let's choose one that we haven't chosen yet let's choose rep so click on rep press ok and notice here we have unique values appearing in a new table here and when you click on slicer you have also have a slicer option at the top appearing now if we had multiple tables you could connect this slicer to many tables by clicking on report connection and then you would click and check the box of the pivot tables you wanted to connect this single slicer to and then when you activate the slicer which is a kind of like another filter you would then apply that filter across all of those tables selected but we only have one table here so we're going to keep it as it is you can also change this just like a table like that and change the size of it so it fits the space you want it to fit and if you wanted to notice here we've got horrendously long like it's like one one column at a time if you wanted to change that to make it fit better you can just click go to top right click on columns go up and it will update like so right so let's see this slicer in action so we've got reps here on the left and we want to find let's say how many how many reps say sold i don't know this many binders in these codes so how, how many how well did say andrews do so if we this slicer is connected to this table and acts like an extra filter even though it's not shown anywhere in this table so if we click on Andrews, we can see here that Andrews only sold or, or bought 28 binders and 155 pen pencils in the central region. And then let's say how Morgan did, or how Parrot did, or Jardine or Thompson. And you just what you're doing is you're slicing the data by rep. You can also do it by multiple reps. If you say you wanted Smith and Andrews, you just click on one of them, press control, and then click on the other one, and then it will add them both up. And you can just keep doing that for however many you want. If you want to get rid of all the slices together, you just press the clear filter at the top, and that will put it back to normal. So slices is really useful, and it adds to sort of creating a really great dynamic report. So if you want to get rid of this slicer, you just have to press delete and click on it. So, right, so you've got your pivot table, you know how to slice it, you've transformed it how you want, and now you want to show it in a really nice visual. So how do you then create a graph using a pivot table? So what you do is you, um, you can click on pivot table, go to insert, and you have, lost, you have a choice of graphs, go to charts like you would without a pivot table let's say we want a line graph here let's say we want stat column let's just choose a stat column and what you will see is that it will have these gray areas appearing because what it's done is you've clicked on a pivot table and you've selected a graph you created a graph within the pivot using the pivot table and so it's made it slightly different to how you would create a graph or how it would look if you were to just not use a pivot table and with these grey boxes represents sort of the rows and columns that you have so the are and the values so the items here are the sort of columns the regions well in this case it's the legend and the regions here represent sort of the x-axis and the sum of units represents the y-axis and the items represent sort of what's these broken down into the stat graph and you could drop down and then just select on central or east or west so on like that and you could use these drop downs you could just select pen just to so get rid of pen or you could just select pen or by doing so or you could get rid of these gray boxes altogether so if you go to a gray box right click 
and you can say hide all field buttons from chart now we go like that and it comes more like what you're used to so that's how you create a sort of graph using pivot table and you could also just change the chart type so you could change it to a clustered column and this would happen so that is how you create uh, graphs using pivot tables and I've also hope you enjoyed how to learning a bit more about pivot tables about how they operate and how they work and I probably will be doing a more advanced pivot table tutorial at some point but I really hope you've enjoyed this one and the trick with this is just to practice 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 every time you look for new things in this Excel related, related to pivot tables, you're bound to find something new and something, a way of increasing your knowledge further. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching.